Hello and welcome to this lesson on conditional probability. If you want to put today's date in the title and pause the video while you have a go at the two do now questions. So Penelope is playing football. When attempting to score a penalty, the probability she scores is two thirds. During the game, Penelope takes two penalties find the probability that Penelope scores both. So we want her to score a penalty and score another penalty. Remember from previous lessons, we've looked at the two rules of probability. When we want an event and another event to happen, um, it's the probability of the first one multiplied by the probability of the second one. So I want her to score and score. So this will be two thirds multiplied by two thirds, which gives you an answer of four ninths. Next question, Mark is playing darts. The probability he hits the bullseye is 0 0.4. Mark throws two darts. Find the probability of Mark hitting the bullseye once. Now he can do this in in two scenarios he can not hit the bullseye and hit the bullseye or he can hit the bullseye and not hit the bullseye now because we are given the probability as a decimal let's leave them in decimals to work them out so the first um, option is he can hit the bullseye and not hit the bullseye so if he hits the bullseye it'll be 0 0.4 so the probability of not hitting the bullseye will be 0 0.6 so 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.6 will give us 0 0.24. Um, you could either double this probability because the other way round will be the same probabilities. So either he doesn't hit the bullseye and then hits the bullseye, which will give us 0 0.24. We want to combine these options. So it could be this option or this option. And the all rule of probability means that we add them together. So that would give me a probability of 0 0.48. Part B, find the probability of Mark hitting the bullseye at least once. Now remember, at least once means he can hit it and not hit it because he's hit at least once. Hit and not hit, just like so. So it's these two possibilities here. But also added into that is the probability that he hits it both times. Because at least once could mean he's hit it and he's hit it again. So if he's hit it and hit it, that's 0 0.4 times 0 0.4, which is 0 0.16. So we can do 0 0.4a add 0 0.16. Or the, in the previous lessons, we were looking um, at a different way to find um of hitting at least once and this is by doing one minus the probability of not hitting it at all so this would just mean one subtract the final option that we've not got in here which would give us the same probability so the probability doesn't hit and it doesn't hit will be 0 0.6 multiplied by 0 0.6 so this will be 0 0.36 and one subtract 0 0.36 gives us the same answer as if we'd added the three options above. So we get 0 0.64. This is a much quicker way to work out whenever you want at least once happening. So we're going to move on with this lesson and we're going to look at conditional probability. Now this is the probability of combined events when the probabilities change after each event. So our success criteria then, we are going to look at being able to draw a tree diagram. So we've looked at for independent events so far. We, so we are, now we are going to move on to look at drawing a tree diagram for um, conditional probabilities. So we are going to know and apply the AND and OR rules to these tree diagrams and then find the probability of combined events that change. So a summary, what we have done so far is we have looked at events um, where we replace. So if we were looking at coloured marbles in a bag, we take one colour or we take one pick out and then we replace it before we take the second one out. So the probability is we're the same on the branches. This is called with replacement. Today we're going to move on and look at without replacement. So this is when we don't return the marble or the item back to the bag. So the balls that are totally in there to start, um, start with decrease by one and the number of items decrease by one. 
Now also note that if a question doesn't specify which, so if it says you, you pick two balls from a bag, then always presume it is without replacement. Let's have a look at such a question. So there are five red balls and two blue balls in a bag. What's the probability that after two picks we have a red ball and a blue ball? So let's look at how they have drawn the tree diagram to start with. So on our first pick, we have the first set of branches. So we can either pick a red, that's five out of the seven balls in total, or we can pick a blue ball, which is two out of the seven. Then from that, we have our second pick. Now, if we are not replacing the ball that we've just picked, so if we pick a red ball, that means there are now only six balls in the bag. And if we picked a red ball, originally there was five, there must only now be four red balls in the bag. So the probability of a second red ball will be four sixths. Now, if we picked a red ball, there will still be two blue balls in the bag. So this will be two now out of the six that are remaining. You can always check because these two probabilities must always add up to one whole one. Now, if we, to start with, picked out a blue ball from the bag, so there was two out of seven blue balls to start with. This would mean there are still the five red balls in the bag, but only six left in there. If we picked out a blue ball, then that must mean there is now only one blue ball in the bag out of the six. Five, six plus one, six again adds up to a whole one. Now the question wanted to know, after two picks, what's the probability we'd have a red and a blue? So. A red and a blue so could be this option here, but also we could equally get it by a blue followed by a red. So remember when we're going across tree diagrams, I want this and this, so I multiply the probabilities. So this will give me 10 ths which will cancel down to 5 21sts. Or I could have this option. Um, notice the 7 and the 6 remain the same on the bottom. The 2 and the 5 are just swapped round, so they will give me the same answer of 5 21sts. So I want this option or this option, so I'll add these two combinations together. So the probability that after two picks we have a red ball and a blue ball will be 10 21sts. Pause the video while you have a go at this question. Have a go at completing the probability tree and finding the probabilities for B and C that it asks. So a bag contains the letters of the word transformation. So just imagine that the letters maybe are just on pieces of paper or card of the same size, written on there, popped into a bag so that you're randomly putting your hand in so you don't know which one you're picking out. So we're going to pick two letters and we are not going to replace them. So there are 14 letters altogether. So the probability that you randomly pick a vowel. Now the vowels are A, E, I, O, U. So one, two, three, four. There are five values. The probability of picking out a vowel will be five fourteenths. Now the rest must be consonants. So 14 take off five must mean that nine of the letters are consonants. So 9 out of 14, remember these must add up to a whole one. They add up to 14 fourteenths. So now if I've picked a vowel from the bag already, I'm not going to replace it. So now all of my probabilities will be out of 13. If I've picked a vowel, the probability of me picking a next vowel, it will have gone down by one. So it'll be 4 thirteenths. But there'll still be nine consonants in the bag if I've picked a vowel. These add up back to 13 thirteenths. If I've picked a consonant, the probability of me picking a vowel, there will there'll still be five vowels in the bag. But if I've picked one consonant, the probability of me picking another one will have decreased by one. So it'll be 8 thirteenths. These add back up to 13 thirteenths. So I've completed the tree diagram. Part B, what is the probability of getting two consonants? So I want a consonant and a consonant. So 9 fourteenths multiplied by 8 thirteenths will eventually cancel down to 36 91sts. And part C, what is the probability of getting exactly one vowel? So this could be the combination of a vowel and a consonant, or a consonant and a vowel. So 5 14ths multiplied by 9 13ths, this is the vowel 
and the consonant. This is the consonant and the vowel. So I could have this or this. So I'd add these two probabilities together. So it would be 45 91sts. So when the probability of one event is dependent on the outcome of another, we're dealing with what we call conditional probabilities. For instance, if we take a card from a pack and do not return it, then the probabilities for the next card drawn will be different. Let's have a look at another example. So a bag contains nine balls of which five are white and four are black. A ball is taken out and not replaced. Then another ball is taken out. So for part A, if the first ball removed is black or given the first ball removed is black, what's the probability that the second ball is black and that both balls will be black? And part B, what is the probability that at least one black ball is taken out? So let's start by drawing the tree diagram. So either I can pick a white ball from the bag or I can pick a black ball. So here's my option for a white ball. Here's my option for a black ball. So the probability of a white ball, there are five white out of the nine in total. So the probability of me picking a black ball will be four nights. So now on my next pick then, so I can either pick a white ball or a black ball again. So if I'm not replacing them, so not replaced, there are now only going to be eight balls left in the bag. So I'm going to write this as my denominator for each option. So if I've picked a white ball out of the bag, there are now only going to be four white balls left to choose from. If I picked a white ball out of the bag, there are still the four black balls. Remember, these have got to add up to a whole one, which they do. If I've picked a black ball out of the bag, there are still going to be the five white balls. So this will now be five eighths. If I've picked a black ball out of the bag, there are now only going to be three black balls. So this is three eighths and these add up to a whole one. So there's my tree diagram. So part A, if the first ball removed is black or given the first ball removed is black, so this is just dealing with this option here, what is the probability the second ball is black? So if the first ball is black, the probability the second ball is black is just three eighths. I'm just reading off this second probability from the diagram here. So A part one is just three eighths. For part two, what's the probability that both will be black, given the first one's black? So black and black. I'm going to do four ninths multiplied by three eighths. So this will give me 12 over 72, which cancels down to one sixth. And for part B, what is the probability that at least one black is taken out? So quickest way to do this is one minus the probability of none of them being black. So none of them being black would mean that both of them are white. So this would be one subtract five ninths multiplied by four eighths. So this will be one subtract 20 72 which would give you 52 over 72 which cancels eventually down to 13 18 so let's just check so yep yeah, three eighths of the first one both black balls was one sixth and at least one we do one subtract non-black to give me the 13 eighteenths. So remember also we looked at questions where you won't draw a tree diagram to help you. Um, this is probably on questions where you were doing more than two picks because the tree diagram would become rather complicated and time consuming in an exam. So let's look at a question here. There are 17 girls and 14 boys in Mr. Taylor's class. 
Mr Taylor is going to choose at random three children. Work out the probability that he will choose exactly two girls and one boy. Now there are three ways then that he can do this. So we can pick a boy, then a girl, then a girl, a girl, then a boy, then a girl, or a girl, then a girl, then a boy. You need to work these three out separately, although they end up with the same answer. Now if we think about this, so probability of a boy is 14 out of 31 in total. So on your next pick, you're picking out of 30 and picking out of 29, which will be the same with the denominators. It's just that the numerators end up in a different order. So we're picking one boy, so there's always going to be an option of 14 for the one boy. For the first girl, there's always going to be option of picking out of 17. And for the second girl, it's going to decrease by one, so there's always going to be an option out of the 16. So this is why these three probabilities are the same. So you could do boy, then girl, then girl, then just recognise there are three ways that this can happen. So you multiply the result by three. So you get an answer of 1,904 over 4,495. Um, now you can have a go at some of the questions from exercise 19E, or you have the option of um, completing Hegarty clips 364 and 365, depending on whether you'd prefer pen and paper to do some questions or to go to Hegarty and attempt them on there. These are not compulsory this week because for the rest of your lessons this week, I want you to revise over all of the probability work that we've done and have a go at the knowledge organiser quiz. So here are the questions if you'd like to have a go at some in your exercise book with pen and paper. Or remember, you can just go and have a go at the Hegarty tasks that have been assigned to you, but they are not compulsory. I've popped the answers also onto the PowerPoint. Now, this last question I want to talk you through is an algebraic probability question. And this question fam uh, famously made national news as it was particularly tricky and stumped a lot of GCSE candidates uh, one year when it appeared on the paper. Now, let's see why. Maybe just from looking at the question, you can gauge why. We've got probability question and we've got algebra involved and a quadratic equation. So it was seen as a particularly tricky question. So let's just go through. So there are N sweets in a bag. Six of the sweets are orange. So if we think about this, the orange sweets that are in a bag it just means that it's out of N as there are N sweets in the bag and six of them are orange. So six out of six over N sweets are orange, the rest are yellow. Now we don't need this, but if we think about this, the ones that will be yellow, so if there are N sweets in the bag, six of them are orange, so N minus six over N would be yellow. Let's read on. Hannah takes a sweet at random from the bag and she eats it. Hannah then takes at random another sweet. She eats the sweet, so we've got one and another. So we would multiply the probabilities. The probability that Hannah eats two orange sweets is a third. So an orange sweet is six over n and another orange. So we'll multiply that by. Now, if she's eaten an orange sweet, there are now only five orange sweets. And if there were N orange sweets, sorry, if there were N sweets in the bag in total, there are now only N minus one sweets in the bag. And it told, tells us in the question that this is equal to a third. So if I think about this, then multiplying fractions, if I multiply my numerators, so six times five is 30. If I multiply the denominator, I want N to multiply both of these terms here. So I'm going to pop these into a bracket and think about expanding it later. And this is equal to a third. To solve something like this, an equation with fractions, remember we cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply the 3 by 30 and the 1 by the n bracket n minus 1. So I'll end up with 90 is equal to n bracket n minus 1. So if I expand this, 
I'll get n squared minus n. If I bring the 90 over, I'll have n squared minus n minus 90 equals zero, just like it wanted me to show here. So I've shown this quadratic here. It then, for part B, asked you to solve it equal to naught. So this is factorising a quadratic. Remember, to factorise a quadratic, you are finding a pair of numbers which will multiply to give the constant on the end. The same pair I've got to add to give the multiplier or the coefficient of n, which is minus 1. So for here, 9 multiplied by negative 10 will give negative 90. And 9 take away 10 will give negative 1. So the values of n which would satisfy these brackets equal to 0 would be negative 9 or 10. We can't have a negative number of sweets, so n would have been 10. This question is particularly tricky. If you followed it, that's brilliant. If you followed some of it, that's also really, really good. If you're confused by it, please don't worry. We can talk this through back when we're in school or with your own maths teacher. What I want you to do now is go and have a go at the Knowledge Organiser quiz. There won't be anything as difficult as this in there. Good luck.